Let us look at example 2. This is model on infectious diseases. Total population region is initially 10,000 citizens. 10,000, right? Yeah. New infections make citizens of susceptible population become part of infected population, which initially has just one person. Okay. So, then it is getting closer to the existing model that we already seen. The number of infections is infection ratio and contract and susceptible population, infected population. Again, the model is quite uh, straightforward there, and the values of contact rate is given, and the infection rate value is also given, and the fraction infected equals infected population over sum of all other subpopulations. Let us see what are other subpopulations. Right now, it is only susceptible infected. If citizens of infected population die, they enter statistics of diseased population, else they recover. Okay, now it is interesting. Now we have diseased population and recovered population. So, we are susceptible, infected, diseased and recovered. The recovering could be modeled as 1 minus fatality ratio into infected population divided by the recovery time. So, how long it takes to recover uh, affects that. Suppose, average recovery time and average disease time that is average time it take to die are both 2 and a half days. The fatality ratio is 90 percent. Only recovered infected population can spread disease to susceptible population. Okay, so that means once people die, they don't spread the disease. So assume they don't spread the disease further. So only the susceptible and infected population spread the disease. And even recovered also, I mean recovered and infected spread the disease to the susceptible population. Okay. So let us look at what the model says and see whether we can spot the errors in the model. Let's open. Go non disease population, so you can take it. Okay, so we have susceptible population, infected population, recovering population, disease population. Fine, susceptible. The flow seems to be make some logical sense. Infection moves them here, recovered moves them here, and or here, either one of the places. Um, the infection is given as a product of contact rate, infection ratio susceptible population infected fraction. So, they are all seems to be connected there infected fraction is given as a relation between this and this uh, infected population total population. So, that seems to be fine recovery dependent on infected population time and fatality ratio. So, that seems to be connected fine deaths also is given the similar relation that seems to be fine. Uh, let us quickly look at model settings. So, final time 0.25 time step, week is time units is week, is ok. And quickly look at the equations. Susceptible population is minus infection, which is fine because there is only outflow, there is no inflow here. So, initial population, initial total population is minus infected, initial value. Initial total population is 10,000, which is fine. Initial infected is 1, that is fine. The equation for infected is infection minus recovery minus death, that is also fine. Flows are fine. Recovering population, initial is 0, adds recovery, which is fine, only inflows are there. Disease population again 0, which is fine, and deaths per plus, which is fine. Uh, infection is just a product of all which is fine, value should be ok, yeah. Recovery rate is 1 minus fatality ratio and infected population by recovery time that was the description given that is also fine. Deaths is infected and fatality ratio. So, those who did not die recovered that is how it is modeled. So, that is a 1 minus fatality ratio is there. Fatality ratio is given as 0 0.9 which is fine. Okay, recovery time was actually given as 2 and a half days. So, converted into weeks. So, 2 by 7, 0.35 is fine. Contact rate is given as 20 per person per week, which is fine. Infection ratio is 0.75, which is fine, which is what is given. Okay, model seems generally okay. Let us run it. 
okay again i'm getting floating point error 3.75 but model seems structurally okay let us see the recovery time was point recovery time was 0.35 per week right okay um uh, let's go to model settings yeah let's look at the time step here time step is 0.25 or in our case the smallest time step was 0.35 recovery time here it was 20 into 0.75 so here the time step the smallest was 0.35 while here the time step uses 0.25 so ideally we want time step be much lower than the smallest delay right so that could be a cause for unusual dynamics we can actually look at the dynamics let us look at infected population it is going negative large uh infected population or recovered population everything just crashes and become negative a susceptible population is increasing which also doesn't make any sense there is no inflows yet it is increasing right so let us see whether time step is only issue here other seems okay so instead of 0.25 let's go say 0.0315 let us try that let us click okay let us run it okay we error stopped at least let us look at infected population uh okay let me run it again okay uh just to let me get rid of the data set it's i'm getting some other data set test 2 which is loaded so just delete the test 2 id 001 is what we need to see id 001 okay susceptible seems reasonable i mean infected seems reasonable susceptible has to decrease and went to zero that's also reasonable recovering you are showing classical s shape growth so that's the dynamics we expect from this model disease population again shows s shape growth but 9000 people die and 1000 people recover that's because fatality ratio is 0.9 so it makes sense yeah so this is the uh overall dynamics and this is the only thing that seems to be error in this particular scenario questions in this case so in this case the main error was caused by uh incorrect simulation time step uh, so one way to check it is let us create a id 002 so in this case i'm going to change the simulation time step further down 0.0156 because we don't know what simulation time step to choose let us choose another time step to see whether there is any difference in the curves so i reduce the time step further let us simulate again let us look at infected population there is a difference that means still we need to choose a more appropriate time step such a way that we are getting a curve where it should not keep changing whenever there is a change occur that means you have to keep reducing until you hit a time step where the change is almost nil so let us do one more let us do an id 3 let us look at settings let us further reduce it to smallest one possible at least in euler method let us run it id3 shows the further small changes in the model the first simulation time step to second it was from point what was it from point uh, 03 to point 125 there is huge jump there is further jump when we further reduce the time step so in these kind of population dynamics or rather the infectious disease model we should remember that the origins of the model came from 
not from the system dynamics community, but from from the epidemics modeling community who use differential equations to model. So, if you want higher accuracy to represent it better, then it is good idea to go for other uh, integration types. So, instead of Euler method, a more powerful integration tool would be a Ranjikuta method. Those who have done methods on numerical methods will know that Ranjikuta has higher accuracy. So, let us just change it to RK4 and call it uh, RK. Simulate it, let us see what happens. That gives us the most accurate results. The style it seems to still improve based on the earlier ones. So, in this particular case we may want to prefer RK4 methods uh, and check whether different time scales also makes a difference else we will go with the lowest time scale where results does not change significantly. Let us look at the recovering population. So, these are things we would like to observe in the sense where it the steady state values is exactly the same right. So, steady state value is what we are interested in it does not matter what we use it all converges to the same 1000 as you can see right here, but the transient shape of the curve also does not change. So, the actual dynamics does not change, but we are interested in highly more accurate results the trajectory changes a bit there is no large change deviations in the dynamics in this large deviation then there is a major error in your logic. So, you need to choose an appropriate time step, but once you get uh, kind of similar results then if you want more and more accurate results, it is have better to have a smaller time step with a better method of integration. So, the starting point is similar, ending point is similar, only the transient logic change. So, we saw two things one first one was a small error in the flow equation, stock flow equation, second one had a floating point error because of time step selection. Let us look at a third scenario and see what kind of errors it can have. 